Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today we're gonna go over basic lighting using Arnold. We're also texturing this very simple sci-fi room. So in the last episode, or in the last tutorial, but I like to call them episodes because I think it's more exciting. Um, in the last episode, we actually modeled this. And on the plus side, I went ahead and animated these and now they're hovering. So it's like cool little hovering chairs. So it's pretty neat. In this tutorial, we're also gonna be talking about incandescence. So incandescence is basically the surface is illuminating, looks like a light source. But I wanna show you two ways of creating incandescence. One of them is using the Arnold's mesh light and the other one's using a texture. Both of them have different attributes. Let's take a look. If you guys want to follow along, you are more than welcome to. You can either follow the previous episode and actually model this yourself, or if you want to texture and follow along, you're more than welcome to download it for free at academicphoenixplus.com. So again, that is a free download. And while you're at it, you're more than welcome to sign up for my newsletter where you will get pre-release contents and a bunch of other perks. All right, enough of that. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to take a look at this first one. The first one that I could do is create a Arnold light and you're going to see something called a mesh light. It gives me a warning down here that says, hey, there is a, a bunch of objects called chair, ring, geoshape. So the reason why is because we duplicated them as a group instead of duplicating the objects individually. So that's an easy fix. I just have to change this to one. Let me open up my Windows outliner. And you can see that I have group one, group two, group three, but the issue is if I've opened these, you're gonna notice that they're all called the same. So this is group one. I'm gonna chair, change this one to chair one and so forth. I'm probably gonna pause this video so you don't have to watch me type and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So now everything is labeled appropriately, chair one. Group one has everything in ones, twos, group two has twos, so on and so forth. All right, now we shouldn't get an error. So let's select our object. Let's go to Arnold, lights, mesh light. And it looks like nothing happened, but let's open up the attributes, control A to open up the attributes. And right away, you can see that we have a chair ring and it turned into a geo shape, which is right here at the light. And we have color intensity and it should look like a regular light. So if I render it out, you're gonna notice that it's emitting light, but the issue is, is that you don't see the mesh. So just click on this little guy right here. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna turn it on again. And it doesn't look like it's very intense. So select normalize, there we go. By selecting normalize, notice that it's a little bit more, you're gonna start to see a little bit more light. And the reason why is because keying calculations based on the object versus the scale. So just go ahead and turn that off. We can go ahead and increase our intensity. I'm really not sure why it's not showing up. Oh, there it is. There's the light and we can, this is very interesting. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to turn on and then the object should show up. So Arnold seems to be having a little bit of a issue right now. So I'm going to save as just in case and let's go ahead and increase the intensity again. And scroll down and let's take a look at a couple of objects. So not only can we see the mesh, we can also turn on light visible. Again, sometimes it's good to just go ahead and run and close it and open it up so that you can refresh it. And there we go. So not only can we see the original mesh, you can also turn on light visible and then you will in fact see the light. So notice that it is a little noisy right now, but it's working, it's illuminating light. So the mesh itself has turned into a light source. So we can pick a color like this and notice that it's having a hard time again. So I probably have to restart it. But the point is, is that we now have a light source with that color. So I'm gonna pick something a little lighter Trying to go for a little bit more sci-fi. I'm getting worried because my computer looks like it's gonna die. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna make the selection. And maybe we wanna decrease the, wow, it's really having a hard time, and then increase it. I don't know if you guys are getting the same issue, but um, I can increase the exposure, which means that it's going to overexpose the area, and therefore it, will, it, will, it looks like it's emitting more light. So 
I think it's still a little intense. I'm going to decrease my intensity a little bit, my exposure. And I'm going to leave it like that. I'm probably going to increase my samples like so. And then let's see what else do we have. And I think I'll just keep it like that for now. Okay, so that's using the mesh light. Now the mesh light uses accurate ray trace shadows. So it does emit lights and it, it based on ray trace calculations, so it's accurate. However, we're gonna do the same thing, but this time we're gonna use this one. Now I'm gonna right click, assign a new material, and this time we're gonna use a texture that's gonna drive this. We're gonna use the AI standard surface provided by Arnold. I personally like to increase my weight all the way to one. I'm gonna scroll down till I see emission. Now let's take a look at what it looks like right now. Like nothing, you can see a little bit of noise, but that's because it's in fact the light from the other mesh light. This is gonna be driven by texture. So I'm gonna increase my weight and right away you can see the effect. So I can make it all the way to one or just gradually go as, as high as you want. So let's go ahead and blast it. Let's make the same color as we did the other one. It's producing a really nice color, but it's not as bright as the other one. Now, just because the weight is one, doesn't mean you can't push this a little bit further. So I'm gonna press two, and you can see now that the texture is actually emitting light, which is pretty neat, but it doesn't go very far. However, it still works, which is awesome. So if you wanna continue, you can keep pushing this and pushing the weight until you get even more light. The only issue with this is that it's a little bit less expensive, but doesn't calculate ray trace as well as perhaps light. So you can see that we also have a lot of noise going on. So that's something that we're gonna have to take care of. I'm gonna reduce the roughness. I'm gonna reduce the specularity because it doesn't need it. Turn off specularity because you can't really see it. And I'm gonna change the color to this as well, just in case. And let's take a look at both of them at the same time. Notice the difference, one's red, one's, well, just regular. Um, that should tell you that they're just two separate Basically, it's driving two separate things. So let's render this out. Whoops, right over here. Press play, hope that it doesn't break anything. Now, the nice thing about this mesh light is that you can select a piece of geometry and create mesh. Now, the only issue is like, let's say that you wanted to make the ring of Lord of the Rings and you wanted the text of the, of the ring to actually glow. Well, you can't select every single face and do it, you actually have to create a texture for it. So then that's what you would use this map for, is to create a texture that glows. So there's a lot of noise going on, which I'm probably, it's probably gonna be the render setting. So what I'm gonna do is show, going to use this as a mesh light. So I'm gonna use all of these as a mesh light. Use the same attributes. Boop. Change the color and do the same thing for these guys. And don't forget to turn on this and turn off normalize because otherwise it's gonna act crazy. And then again, one last time. Okay, let's turn on light visible and let's take a color here and let's turn off normalize. I think it looks pretty Good. We'll see what Arnold thinks when we render it out. Okay. Oops, I got something there. Let me close that. Let me turn this on. Let me go to my outliner. There's, so if you need to grab it, notice that I went to my outliner. There's a little plus sign that's in a new edition. Select it from here, and then you can go and turn off. Did I, I did turn it off and on. Show mesh. Normalize this off. Okay, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Interesting. Very unpredictable. That's too bad. I shouldn't act like that. I feel like I did something wrong. Hmm. I'm gonna increase my samples. Whoops, not that much. Might be easier just to go through the outliner. Let's see, light visible, normalize. Let's go ahead and change this to two. 
to get shadows. Check all this out. Okay. We'll do one more. Show color light visible. Let's do two samples, turn off, normalize. So something strange about number you, not you. Something odd about this one. This one's having a hard time. Hmm, maybe I'll just delete it and then try again. Arnold light, mesh light. Let's go like this. Change it to two, light visible to render. Hmm. Interesting. I'll try to figure out in a little bit. So this one's exposure is up, so I'm gonna reduce that so everyone's about the same, and then I can make sure that I can fix all of them if need be. So let's render it one more time, and that's what our environment looks like so far, except for that weird one in the back. So we got an odd one out. All right, so let's go ahead and light the scene a little bit more. So I'm gonna save and I'm going to add one of my favorite lights, which is under Arnold lights. I like area lights. Now, according to this image, it looks actually like studio lighting. Everything's pretty flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and use kind of like a studio based lighting. So I'm gonna kind of drag this area light Whoops. And I'm going to push it back over here. Make sure it's kind of facing the scene, like so. Maybe a little higher. And we can see what that looks like. It doesn't look like very much. And the reason why, and let's see if my computer can handle this, um, is the same thing as mesh lights is that you have to turn off normalize. There we go. By turning off normalize, it doesn't look at the scale anymore. It looks at just the light lighting the whole environment. So that's really what we want. So I'm gonna increase my resolution to 1024, powers of two. I'm gonna change the color to, the color slightly purple according to the reference. Now you can see that's illuminating a lot here. So I'm gonna to try to bring that up a little higher, maybe a little closer this way. Cool, it's coming along just a slightly more purple color just to kind of break it apart a little bit cool we're getting some lighting nice lighting all right this is just kind of like a basic light I'm going to duplicate this control D I'm going to move this to this whoops not that do I have it yes okay I'm going to drag this to the other side like so point it down a little bit this way and this one I think I'm going to do a similar color as the seats or the mesh lights, but just a little bit lighter blue. Let's see what that looks like. Oops, over here. Let's press play. It's a little strong. I kind of like the look, the gradient look. So let me grab this and I'm going to reduce the color just a little bit. And I'm gonna keep the intensity as is and I'm gonna increase my samples. So the rendering is starting to cause what's called fireflies. It just means that it's calculating a lot and it's trying to figure it out. So it causes these little fireflies. And the way to fix it is that we have to crank up the values, but we'll crank up the values more when we have a more finished piece. All right, so we have a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue. It's kind of like a nice little gradient. I might want to increase the intensity of this one just a little bit more. Oops, let me open up the attributes, Control A. Maybe just a little bit more. Let's try 1.5. There we go. As long as we're starting to see the room a little bit more. Now let's zoom in. Let's pretend that we are taking a picture. Let's turn on the resolution gate. This is the resolution gate, so we get to see exactly what's over here. Okay, is that close enough? Looks okay. This is probably not the best way to do it, but this is how I do it. I'm going to keyframe my camera. So I'm going to select my camera by clicking on this camera right here, this little icon. Then I'm going to click on the letter S. It's going to create a keyframe on my camera. And the reason why is because I can move my camera around and then go back by doing this. Now, most people have a camera called RenderCam. 
Most people do not do this, but I find it to be very convenient. I just find it convenient so I can just move around. I don't have to hop around cameras. All right, so our scene is coming along now, but I hope that was helpful. That was an introduction to Arnold Mesh Lights as well as Arnold's Incandescence. All right, the plus section. This is the plus in Academic Phoenix Plus. So I wanted to show you that it can be a little bit of a pain to select each of these little light sources and then maybe even scroll out and try to grab my lights. And if this is a simple scene, imagine if you have a huge environment full of lights. Arnold and Maya work together, I suppose, to create this handy little tool called, and I'm gonna hover, open the light editor. Well, it's just called the light editor. I don't know why it says open. You click on that and then you're gonna see this really fancy list. So instead of going through the outliner or going to try to find the scenes, Maya now has a light editor and it is very quickly you can select your lights and make changes here. So for example, if I wanted to increase my exposure of my lights to just be a little bit like 0.5, just a little more brighter, I can just go in and change it very quickly. This is fantastic. If I want to increase my samples for rendering, instead of selecting every single light, I can just go in and change all of my settings. Not only that, it will open up these lights. Remember how I was opening up the outliner and trying to make all these changes? Well, now you can just go in and click on these guys and it will show up here. Uh, the attributes of the, light, of the mesh light will show up over here. So it's basically an outliner dedicated to lights. So it's awesome. I've always wanted something like this and this makes lighting a lot easier. Not only that, you can create lights here as well if you choose to. So hopefully that was helpful. I know it was very quick and very fast, but uh, this is something that you will see me as I start going through more tutorials. I will start using this also a little bit more. So this is great too. You can just select them all and then instead of clicking one at a time, I can just go ahead and fix it. In the next tutorial, we are going to go into actually texturing these objects. So thank you again for listening. You can download this at Academic Phoenix Plus. And if you would like while you're there, sign up for my newsletter. By signing up, you will get free tutorials, free pre-release content, and a bunch of other perks. So again, thank you so much for listening. I truly appreciate it. And I will see you next time.